Richard Feynman once said, what I cannot create, I do not understand. So in that spirit, let's make a 555 timer to better understand it. And I have, here we are right here, this showing you this uh, breadboard that has all the components of a 555 timer and does is currently doing what a 555 timer can do. So I'll go through the, uh, the circuit here and show you some uh, the different parts of it and how we're able to accomplish what the circuit does. Every 555 timer has two comparators in it. One of the comparators determines when the capacitor voltage is above two-thirds V plus and the other comparator determines when the capacitor voltage has fallen below one-third V plus. And we're accomplishing that here with this little op amp right here. This is a dual op amp. It's an LM2904. It's a dual op amp. And I selected an op amp because I really needed the output of this thing to be a high and low signal. The original comparator I tried to use for this particular circuit needed, uh, it had a, what we call a open collector output. It was a lot more difficult to interface that with the other components I needed to interface it with. So I stuck with an op amp and it works fine with the op amp. I have these uh, two indicator lights here and one of the indicator lights is telling us when the voltage is below one third B plus and it blinks briefly because immediately after sensing, for instance, that the voltage is below V plus, um, is below one third V plus, it triggers the discharge transistor to turn off so the capacitor starts to charge again. The other trend, um, the other LED tells us when we're above two thirds V plus and as soon as that particular LED goes off it triggers our SR flip-flop and remembers that state and it also causes the capacitor to begin discharging through our, our discharge transistor right here. So you'll see these blink very br briefly, but when they blink, they're really sending a signal to the SR flip-flop over here, which is composed of, we're using here a uh, quad two input NOR gate. And there's actually four NOR gates in here, but we only need two of them to create an SR flip-flop. And I'll show you what that circuit looks like. Once we trigger the SR flip-flop, and in this case, from the when the voltage gets above two thirds V plus, we reset the the flip flop, and that has the effect of turning on one of the LEDs here. And when the voltage gets below one third V plus, we set the flip flop. Now, once we set or we reset the flip flop, we cause the transistor here to turn on. And once it turns on, it provides a path to ground through this resistor from the capacitor so that the capacitor can discharge. Once the capacitor gets discharged below one third V plus, then the transistor is turned off and stops discharging the capacitor. And then the capacitor starts to charge through these two resistors right here. So it actually discharges through this single resistor and it charges through both these resistors. And that's why this is not a completely symmetrical um, on and off time. To create the flip-flop, all we need is these two cross-coupled NOR gates. And if you have two cross-coupled NOR gates, it's what we call an active high SR flip-flop. In other words, it changes state when the signal goes high. You can make an active low SR flip-flop using two NAND gates that are cross-coupled. So what I needed here was actually a uh, active high trigger, so we use the NOR gates here. And that's a CD4001. So all I really have here, there's not a whole lot of complexity here. All I have these resistors here for is to limit current through these two LEDs that are telling us when we when the trigger is set and when the threshold is set. These three resistors right here form our reference voltages. 
the voltage at this particular point in the circuit is going to be one third of V plus, which is three volts. And the reference right here is going to be two thirds V plus, which is six volts. So we're only dealing with three volts and six volts as our references going into our um, op amp. And that's it. Over on this side of the circuit, we have our two resistors, um, resistor A and resistor B. They're usually referred to in the, um, the documentation. And here's our capacitor. And here, for the capacitor, we're using a 330 microfarad capacitor. So it's very simple. And by the way, this resistor here is just limiting the current into the base of the transistor here. And these two resistors here are actually limiting the current through these LEDs. I'm using some pretty high value resistors for the, L the LEDs because on the camera, the camera sees these as extremely bright if you use standard resistor values for these. For building the circuit on the bench, you're going to want these to be like 470 ohms instead of uh, what I've got here, um, 22K, which is really high, but the camera really amplifies this light a lot. Um, on this side, I was able to get away with 4.7K resistors for the LEDs since they're only on for a brief period of time. Well, let's take a look at the way the comparator section works. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the capacitor from the input to the op amps um, to our comparators. I'm going to disconnect that because right now that's where it's getting its signal from. And instead, we're going to replace it with, and I'm going to zoom out here to give you a better view of this. And what I've done is I've created a little uh, virtual potentiometer here that I'm going to show you that comes in really handy to explain how this, uh, how these comparators work. So what I've done is I've um, hooked up these two wires here, one to ground and one to V plus. And this is just graphite. I've just drawn this in with a pencil. And if you want to do this, we'll make one of these. You really just need to use a like a 6B or an 8B pencil. You need something really soft. And you just fill in. And I've got a template for this that I'll give you access to. And I've just set this up so we've got 6 volts here and 3 volts here as our comparator voltages. I'm going to take the this other lead here and plug it into the input to our comparator. And the interesting thing is I can, I can put my finger on the end of this alligator clip here. And so I can take my finger and move it up and down along this makeshift potentiometer we've got here. And you'll notice that when I get to 3 volts, above 3 volts, the, one of the LEDs shuts off because it's no longer below 3. And then when I get up here to 6, the other LED lights up telling us we're above three. So if I move up and down, it's detecting that I'm going below three, lights up that LED, and above six lights up the other LED. This is a really great way to graphically show how potentiometers work. I'm very sensitive because we're using a, an op amp essentially and comparators are, are are a branch or a, a cousin to the op amp. So six volts, and here's, now we can mimic our capacitor this way. Imagine our capacitor is initially discharged, so we're down here. When we're down here, the voltage across the capacitor is less than three. So what that immediately does is it turns on the, it sets the SR flip-flop and you can see that other LED over there that's on. So we've set, now we're coming up, and our trigger voltage from the comparator is no longer on, but the flip-flop is set, and it's gonna stay set until it's told to do something otherwise. So our voltage is rising on the capacitor, and then it gets to six volts, and bam, the threshold comparator comes on, and it resets the SR flip-flop. So now the 
flip-flop is in a state where it's telling the capacitor or it's telling the discharge switch for the capacitor to come on. Once that turns on, it starts discharging the capacitor. Now it keeps doing that. It's latched on, so it keeps doing that until the voltage gets below 3 volts. And then bam, that we're in a state now to where that switch is shut off, that discharge switch is shut off, and the capacitor starts to charge again. So we charge, discharge, charge, discharge, and on and on and on. And that's basically how the 555 timer works. And I built this in phases and that's the best way to test it out is to build your comparator circuit first and use a potentiometer or whatever you've got. I can just as easily take this and you know if you don't want to use the the homemade potentiometer I've got you can just take any potentiometer and plug it into the board Okay, so once I hook up my potentiometer, right now it's um, all the way down counterclockwise, so we're in, we're below one third V plus. And as I turn it, I get to above one third V plus. And now I'm above two thirds V plus, so if I go the other direction, it just cycles back and forth between these two states. You really have to have that SR flip flop in there so that you stay in the proper state until you reach the other state. And the two states are capacitor charging and capacitor discharging. So when you reach the state of capacitor discharging because the voltage is too high on the capacitor, you really want the discharge switch over here to come on, start discharging the capacitor, and keep doing that until you reach that other state, which is now the capacitor has gotten below one-third V plus. And then when that happens, you want it to flip into the other state so that you keep charging it until it gets to the, the upper state. And so really this SR flip-flop is acting like a little memory. It's, it's basically telling the system, you're currently discharging the capacitor because the voltage is too high. And we're going to keep discharging it until we get to the next state, which is below one-third V plus. And then we're going to start charging it again. So that memory element there, that's a one-bit memory element, and that's all it does for us, what this SR flip-flop does. I've got the schematic for this, and I'll put it up so you can look at it. And I also have a, a fritzing diagram of the, this breadboard that's a little bit easier to follow than what I have here. If I was to actually uh, take a picture of this, you probably would have a hard time following it. I can pull, uh, I can put this, take this back off my potentiometer that we were using for the demo and I'm going to take this lead from the capacitor and put it back onto the input to the comparators and we're back in business doing what 555 timers are famous for, timing. One thing you need to know about the 555 timer though is it does much more than timing and I'll have a do a series on the 555 timer that shows all the different things you can do with it. The fact that it has these two comparators in it makes it useful for a lot of things other than just timing. You can use it to know when the threshold input or the um, trigger inputs have reached certain voltages. So for instance, you could use the 555 timer to detect whether a battery was within range. Um, sort of like what we call a window comparator, you know, is the voltage range good? Is it not too high, not too low? Um, you could also check sensors that are hooked to the 555 timer and determine from the voltages on those sensors whether you want the output to go high or the output to go low. For instance, photocells would work good with the, the 555 timer. You could make music based on, or sounds based on, uh, a photocell being high or a photocell being low. Or you could make the 555 timer control a device based on whether you hit one of the photocells with a laser or a light to turn it on versus hitting the other one to turn things off. So there are a lot of applications for the 555 timer. It's a, it's a very a brilliant device, very well designed, and um, later on we'll get into some of those application ideas for it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Bye.